And we are live. Hi, Shane. Hi, Lisa. Um, so this is Dev Diary number four. Hey, Team Seattle, you there? Hey, Team Los Angeles, we're here. Awesome. Um, so we have a whole bunch of questions from our Kickstarter backers to go through. It's a lot of rules previews. There's going to be a lot of... And we're at uh, $118,000. We just unlocked the uh, Malkavian anti-tribute pin. A really crazy Malkavians. Um, we're partially through our Sabat stretch goals, and we're about to hit our 30th goal, um, which is insane. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Um, so I guess without further ado, let's jump into this. Jason, you want to take it away with question number one? Sure. Question number one comes from Clayton T. Weeks. Clayton has a rules question. Uh, he asks, will there be a huge change in the vicissitude mechanics? Uh, like all disciplines in Mind's Eye Theater, Vampire the Masquerade, the rules for vicissitude have been reimagined to fit the LARP environment specifically. These rules are currently in development by the design team at this moment. In fact, at this very moment, I do believe. Uh, however, we can assure you that the limitations of vicissitude are being strictly defined, much like they are for the disciplines you saw in the uh, alpha vertical slice packet, such as OSPEX. We do understand that many of the powers in the game need clear definitions and clear limitations to make them playable, and we do intend to develop those for you. Uh, I have another question here, also about rules. A lot of rules questions this week. I can't imagine why. Uh, from Kyle Morgan, a familiar name. Hello, Kyle. Kyle asks, uh, with no more negative traits and no specific appearance attributes, how do you plan on handling the Nosferatu and Gangrel clan flaws? Uh, well, we are still developing parts of the game, including the clan flaws, uh, and we'll be showing you more and more of the game as we continue development. Uh, but for now, I can tell you that we have a little sneak preview of the Gangrel Clan flaw for you, and we will uh, publish that uh, along with this dev diary so that you can see it. It'll be the first of uh, several previews that we're mentioning in this dev diary that we will share with you this week. And another rule question from Call Doucette. She asks, are you planning on having a section for conversion rules or suggestions on how to convert from Laws of the Night to the new system? Just curious, as my troop game is planning on converting. Okay. One-on-one um, -on -one conversion from Laws of the Night Revised to Mind's Eye Theater Vampire the Masquerade isn't one of our design goals. Part of our design philosophy that we've shared with you is that we are building a complete reinvention of the game so it can play to the specific strengths of the live action environment while still feeling like the classic game that we all love. If you check out the Alpha Slice preview and our design videos, you'll get a very good look into our core system and our design philosophy, and you'll see that making a straight up formulaic conversion one to one could be pretty challenging. We do understand that this is a question that more players and storytellers will ask as we get closer and closer to the release of the game. So we will think a little bit more about what suggestions we can make to you for handling the switch. Uh, okay, no more rules questions for a moment. Instead, I think we have questions for Shane and Alyssa. It's true, we do. Um, this one comes from shock of all shocks, Kyle Morgan. Hi, Kyle. Uh, he says, with my troop having just gone through the alpha play test this weekend, you say that you'd like all feedback in by June 22nd. That is true. Circle it on your calendar. That's when we're going to close at least the actionable feedback. Um, are you planning on putting out a response to the feedback as you did for your generation and ventry slices? So nothing as formal as that. We're not going to write up a document. If we did that, we'd actually have to stop work on the book and write a different book, which would be the the response to all of the feedback we got. We got hundreds of answers, and thank you guys so incredibly much for thank all the... You. It's so incredibly helpful, um, and we really, really appreciate the feedback. So we want to make sure that instead of giving you a detailed response that we write out and put on social, we actually give you a response by putting it in the actual book um, and by taking some of the great things that you guys pointed out and actually actioning on them. We actually had so much feedback we could make an entire book called Vampire the Feedback. <laughs> which is good. It would go to 11. <laughs> Oof. Dude, whatever. You're going to make a Van Halen joke in about two minutes. Um, I know it. 
Uh, so Ian R. James asks. Are you talking about love? I don't know what you're talking about. 1.5 seconds. Thank you. Uh, Ian R. James asks, like many here, I would like to thank you for the effort you're putting forward to revamp, see what you did there, a system that's needed it for a while. You're welcome and thank you, because that's a huge compliment. Um, I would like to know your plan, uh, if you plan to reveal your efforts to rework other disciplines as well. So as you'll probably hear all of us say a couple times in this video, yes, we plan on putting out more rules previews. They're not going to be as robust, and by robust I mean as long, frankly, as the Alpha Slice. Um, to do that, again, we'd have to stop work on the book, and we really want to make sure that we're, heading, we're hitting the deadline that we have set for ourselves. Um, but there will be smaller rules previews. They will be just as meaty, for lack of a better word. They will definitely have some things for you to dig into and give us really good feedback um, like we've been getting previously. Um, so you definitely haven't seen the last of the previews. There will be more. Um, and he also asks, when will the book be finalized? So this actually ties into that question. Um, we're definitely a, a small independent company. Um, we've set a very aggressive time schedule for ourselves that we intend to do our level best to hit. Um, our goal is to try and get the book out by the end of the year or at the very latest, the start of next year. We don't want to push this into 2016. Um, currently our plan is to hand this off to our layout designer um, as soon as we're heading off to LA by night. Um, we have to make sure that, I say um a lot, have you noticed? We have to make sure that we hit a lot of internal goals that we're actually pretty close to. Um, so we want to try and stay to that. Yeah, so end of the year, start of next year. The good news about this is, is that the most challenging part where, where any publishing company, White Wolf certainly is, You want to get as much in as you can within a certain reasonable amount of time. So the, the, the good thing for the, the fan or the consumer is that typically when something run, does run long, you do end up getting more because we fight with ourselves about how much to keep. So, <laughs> And it's definitely also about getting not just more but better. We want to make sure that you know, we're putting out the as, as close to perfect as we can get it without you know, rat-holing for 10 years about what is perfect and then putting out some we rat video games. Nine years. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have another Kyle Morgan question. We all get a Kyle Morgan question, so this one's for you, Shane. I feel like I'm part of the Kyle Morgan club now. <laughs> uh, we need to make you your own bloodline, maybe. Yeah, is that a plan? <laughs> might be a, uh, might another... be a clan pin there, too. I'm not sure. <laughs> this is going to be an inside joke. Welcome to the club, Kyle. Um, <laughs> I know the whole point of the alpha slice is to look at the core mechanics, blood and betrayal, which, quote, which I am stoked about, we're stoked about this, too, um, is listed as the premiere for the new book. Uh, and that's correct, premiere slash preview. Uh, will this be a beta slice focused on the full scope of the game with all the clans? Yes. And will there be a similar feedback process as the alpha playtest? Well, we'll clarify this a little bit. So uh, Blood and Betrayal is a, a kickoff game. It's, it's the first, essentially, it's like... A, you know, it's the open, first game at the Olympics, or it's the first. It's, it's like the preview game before the basketball season starts. Or uh, it's not a it's not a beta test. It's not a, a really even a play test. It's a this is the first game run using these rules by us. Um, so that's a premiere event, not a, a test for the rules. They should be done and lay out. Um, the book won't be out at this time, uh, but it will be. The content of it will be done and being designed. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as, as we've said a couple times, when it comes to alphas and betas, um, the beta process is definitely a little different from the alpha. It's a little tighter. Um, it's focusing on fine-tuning some very specific things. Um, so we're going to be putting out previews, which are, again, more along the lines of the alpha slice. They won't be as long, but they'll definitely be things for you guys to see. Bite-sized chunks versus, uh, you know, a, a full meal, the little slices. Yeah different things uh, but that's that's how we're gonna we're gonna re consistently release stuff between now and when we lock the book but they'll definitely come in in little uh, little tidbits versus uh, big pieces and since we have a community that's all over the world we want to make sure that we're doing this in a way that we can get your feedback um, so using social using the the digital web to do these previews is the best way for us to get your feedback simply because we can't go run an actual alpha play test or a, a, a beta test directly in your living rooms. Although we would if we could. And if anyone has a private jet, me, hi, sign me up. I'm, I'm up um, there. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is another one for you, Shane. Uh, Cole, how do you pronounce your name? 
Doucette, I believe. Yes, Doucette. We're trying. And then Noid. No, I don't. Yeah, we always pronounce that one weird. Noyad? Yeah, something like that. Norad. Norad, Noyad. <laughs> um, yes, the answer to that is, is yes. Uh, we do have uh, a lot of rare bloodlines, uh, and we actually have shown a lot of the art for those bloodlines. Uh, we kind of did that first um, uh, on purpose to sort of highlight stuff that had not really had a lot of attention in the past. And the next, uh, the next actually uh, release we'll have is for something for the Bali, which we got some something. Uh, Nothing to do with the Brugia. That's a dirty lie, dirty rumor. <clears throat> Buried in the sand, <sighs> salt of the earth, long nap. Um, Best but, night's uh, work we ever did. <laughs> Fuck both of you. Yeah. All right. Um, but so we actually do have. Uh, we're going to actually release a couple of bloodlines real soon. Uh, we've got the uh, two gangle bloodlines that are, we said it earlier, the Noyad, Noid, and N-O-I-A-D, we should have a contest. Um, and uh, the other bloodline, which we're actually calling the, the Coyote, which more popularly known as the City Gangrel. Uh, we kind of thought that they should actually have a name, so uh, our, our great Reese has became up with that, and we think it's very clever. Um, so we'll be putting out the actual description so you can see more um, about those bloodlines. We'll put those out on social this week as well. Because um, otherwise you'd have to watch us try and read it off my iPad, and that's, that's beyond it's, us. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Going back to you, Team Seattle. Okay. Here in the gray city of Seattle, we have questions from Owen Marks. Owen has several questions. Let's see. His first question is about Valdry for Sabat. Uh, Owen asks... Um, how do you plan to address Valdery? This is a nightmare to administer for a storyteller staff, and you end up with dozens or hundreds of vinculi over the course of a character's lifespan. True. Um, I'm really happy to tell you that the writers of our game, our designers, are not only professional writers and game designers, but they've all been storytellers and players of Mind's Eye Theater games for many years, and they came into this project with the intention of solving as many known problems as they could, including this one. The Sabat setting chapter has solid system for uh, Raitai with very clear rules that anticipate these issues. It's undergoing its very first uh, test at the moment, and the early feedback is very positive. So we hope that you'll be pleased with how we clarify this issue and make it more playable in your chronicles. Uh, Owen has another question about mass combat rules. Why do mass combat rules generalize character contributions? Um, well, one of the most frequent and widespread complaints about various editions of Mind's Eye Theater for the last two decades is that big combat scenes can take forever and ever to resolve. Anything involving more than a handful of players can take hours or even all night, and many players uh, feel that this was just too tiresome and not worth the effort, which is... Um, an interesting way to point out that uh, different players can play the same game and have very different opinions about how that game ought to behave. Uh, our approach has been to give uh, Mind's Eye Theater Vampire the Masquerade uh, a more cinematic system designed to bring uh, in the awesome feel of your favorite vampire story or movie uh, into your chronicle. Uh, the system is designed to be very easy and fun and to make the action go a little faster. Uh, we also think that it's crucial that it scales to the different types of combats that are going to happen in the LARP environment, from the one-on-one -on -one fight to the uh, typical small gang fight, or even the 200-player uh, battle. Uh, the storyteller managing a combat scene will have the option of evaluating the situation uh, and choosing between the complex scenario or the mass combat rules based on the pacing of the story, uh, the game flow, the needs of the story, and the expectations of the players not locked into one to one choice. Um, that said, the mass combat system has a number of different options that players involved in an opposite or defending mob can take, and that is a new element of the system. And so we expect there to be a brief learning curve as players adjust to the rules and discover uh, what the system can really do for their games and what choices that they want to make when they're faced with big combat fights. Uh, more questions from Owen. He asks, why is it that a person can only be targeted by one physical, social, and mental challenge per turn? Someone using celerity actions can only punch a target once. Why not allow three people to punch the same target on their own actions? If it's for streamlining, doesn't this seem to be taking it way too far? 
and limiting action beyond believability? Fair question. Um, like beauty, believability is in the eye of the beholder, uh, especially when we're discussing a game about vampires and blood magic. We're using rules and math to simulate a mystical world of bloodthirsty nocturnal marauders and ancient horrors. The short answer to the question is that we created this rule to tell the story that we think brings the most fun to the most players. Um, now here's the long answer. Part of our design philosophy is that rules and story should mirror each other. Rules should reflect the story that you're trying to tell. If a key component of the game's backstory is that the Bruja, Alyssa, are feared warriors, then the rules should reflect that. People who want to play feared warriors should be gravitating toward the Bruja. Um, Laws of the Night Revised had a challenge resolution, resolution system that didn't allow for the granular level of detail and choices that Mind's Eye Theater Vampire the Masquerade provides with our complex scenario and mass combat rules. Removing the rule that limits targeting would change the essential dynamic of the entire game so that it would always favor the fast striker character, uh, characters that are designed to attack early in the initiative order. This would invalidate many character concepts, it would discourage mental and social focus characters, and it would force players that want a viable combat character into one exact model. Um, striker attack coteries would form that would swarm into a game, target a single character, and kill her long before the other characters even had a chance to react. Um, that's really not the game that we think we want to encourage because that game is fun only for a few players. Uh, we want to encourage a game where all types of characters are viable in general and where everyone has a chance to have fun but with characters that are specialized to be awesome in their chosen fields. Battles should always be epic, frightening things that are always a risk, and we think this rule supports that. Last question from Owen. Uh, he noticed that the weapons in the vertical slice are extremely generalized, and he understands that this isn't a simulationist game, but players like customization. Uh, we agree. One of the chapters uh, in the book specifically deals with the creation and specialization of equipment and weapons. We just didn't include that in the alpha slice but you will see it later. I think that's uh, probably enough for me and the rules. All right, so we have one question left, and, and one quick thing to say about the alpha slice is that it definitely is a slice. It is by no means everything, um, and it is also, it is an alpha. It's something that we, we took your, your feedback on, so don't think that that's what the entire book is going to be. There's only going to be two clans. If I had my choice, there'd only be one, but Denied. everyone be mad. Denied it left. All right, so the very last one, uh, the vertical slice version of Celerity leaves speed-based melee combatants, Asimites and City Gangrel, out in the cold. Are you going to address this in the final game? Um, so our design goal, you know, as, as Jason said, is that all characters should be viable, and you know, especially in areas that the story suggests that they should be good at. So this absolutely means that the Asimites and City Gangrels will be able to, uh, I believe as the kids say, be able to cut a bitch. Um, so yes, that will they'll absolutely Kids don't be say that. Just you say that. I'm a kid. <laughs> you shut up. All right. Well, now that the battery is about to die on my laptop, let's end this. Team Seattle. Nice Team you. Fuck you, Shane. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. See we'll ya. see you next week. <laughs>